Diana has a song that comes from Faith Rivera. I close my eyes, I open my heart, I take a deep breath, let the healing start. I lift my hands, I plant my feet, I let love in, I feel the beat that's calling, calling, calling us to rise, rise, spirit rise up, rise in me, I ready my soul, I clear my mind, I'm here and now, in present time, I feel the power, of a thousand suns lighting up the dark oh we rise as one rise rise spirit rise up rise in me I sing to you. Sing to you. You sing to me. You sing to me. Change up this noise. Make sweet harmony. Rise. Rise. Spirit, rise up. Rise in me. Thank you, music team, Diana. Do you feel that energy rising up? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think we need to work on that a little bit more. We'll see if we can't raise that energy more today. 
Let me ask you a question. On Easter Sunday, is there a feeling, whether you're Christian or any other denomination or religion, is there a feeling this time of year, a feeling of a rising up of energy, a rising up of spirit, a hope for new dreams, new goals? Yes? yes? Okay, the energy's starting to rise. I can feel it. Good. <laughs> Why do you come to church on Easter? Why? I hear the kids have a lot of energy today. (laughs) Do you come to church because you always do on Easter? It's something that's expected? Do you come to welcome spring? Or do you come to celebrate Easter in a safe, secure place that is your spiritual home? What is Easter through your eyes? Well, whatever Easter has been to you, I invite you to open your mind and your hearts to the miracle of this day, not a, just a miracle that took place 2,000 years ago, but a miracle that continues, and continues not because of religion, not because some preacher says it has to, but because it's a life regenerating in you. It's a new spirit that rise, is rising up, and we are here today, in particular, because of a miracle of death and resurrection. But that miracle is important today, not because of what happened then, but because of what it means to us. It's a metaphor for everything we go through in our own lives. Death and rebirth is a spiritual process that has happened since the beginning of time. Each and every one of us knows that we're going to live especially if we're going to live spiritually, and there is a process of death and rebirth. We die to the old way, and we are born again to a new way. It can happen anytime, as many times as it takes to rise in our consciousness. We die to old thoughts. We die to old attitudes. We die to our old selves. And every time we do this, Every time we grow and we change, an aspect of us dies. And sometimes that is painful. Letting go of something that was a valued part of our upbringing, a valued part of our journey, even though it no longer serves us, can be painful. And we go through times of grieving. Sometimes we don't know where we are going, and we go through times of despair. But we always, always rise again. Is that not true? That's true. All right. Can I get an amen? Amen. Okay. I see, feel the energy rising. (laughs) So today we celebrate the individual who completed his earthly curriculum. He went all the way. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus completed his earthly curriculum. And then he became a teacher. He transformed his life. He raised his body up and not only resurrected the body, but then ascended. And it's important to know that one of the words that was translated as ascend actually meant to rise in consciousness. He rose to a place in his understanding of God, of spirit, of life, that nothing could destroy the physical body. We could say he became fully illumined. He became a master. And like all masters, he remains with us today as a teacher, a guide, a friend, for some a Messiah and a Savior. But what did he save us from? Did you know that for the first 600 years after Jesus lived, there was no mention of saving us from sin in the Bible or any of the scriptures? That was put in later. So what did he save us from? Ourselves, our own error thinking, our thoughts of lack and limitation. He called us, called to us to remind us that the same spirit that raised him up raises us up as well. That spirit is in you. It's in me. It's in every living being. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, wrote, Easter reminds us that we are celebrating 
the rising up of the triumphant Christ spirit in you and me. What is that Christ spirit? What is rising up? Well, have you ever had a problem or a challenge in your life? Am I the only one? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, great. I'm going to sit down. You all can talk to me. <laughs> We've all had problems and challenges in our life. Some are easy, some are not. Is there ever any time when there's an obstacle that looks like there is no way you could overcome it? I've had those experiences. There just seemed no way through it. Have you ever gotten overwhelmed by the things that are before you? Certainly in our world today, especially if we pay a lot of attention to what's going on out there in the world of social media and politics and all of that, it can be very overwhelming. Look around at your neighbors. But resurrection is about rising up from that place of consciousness. You know, sitting somewhere near you in this sanctuary today, there is someone whose life is a resurrection story. Maybe all of us have some resurrection story of our own. Someone who has risen up after the deadness of abuse or addiction. Someone who has risen up out of the depths of grief. Someone who has risen up from depression and despair. Someone who has risen up from living their life based on the expectations of others and been reborn into being who they truly came to be. I don't know what everybody's spiritual tradition is in this room, what their backgrounds are, but I do know there are those who have suffered greatly and decided that though they were ostracized, judged, mistreated by either those around them or by themselves, they have decided to break the bonds of silence and point the way to hope for themselves and for those around them. And for me, that is resurrection. That is rising up, not just in your own experience, but pointing the way for others. That's what Jesus did. He pointed the way for us. So I'd, what I'd like you to get today, to really hear, is that the very reason we still celebrate this event, all these centuries later, is to understand something. To understand that we also rise. You know, Easter was not celebrated as a holiday until the 8th century. 800 years after the life of Jesus. And even then, there was great debate over when the resurrection occurred, if it occurred, whether it was worthy of a holiday. There's a period in Catholic history called the Paschal Controversies. They fought, they came to blows over this stuff in the name of the Prince of Peace. <laughs> so to the early followers of Jesus' teachings, though, the teachings of the three years leading up to that were more important than the crucifixion itself. Indeed, the whole idea of why he was crucified has changed throughout history. As I said, the idea of being crucified for our sins was not even in the consciousness of people for the first couple hundred years after Jesus, and not canon for 800 years after Jesus. I have said, and I will continue to say, that Jesus died because he wanted to change the world. And whenever we are striving for change in ourselves or in the world around us, there are those inside us and outside of us who don't want change. Ever tried to make a big change in your life and you have those little voices in your head? Oh, what are you thinking? Do you remember the last time you tried to do that? Why did Jesus come? He came that we may have life and have it what? Abundantly. Abundantly. He taught how to be whole, how to be prosperous, how to be happy. He passed no moral judgments on the things that so many Christians base their religion on today. Things like whom it is okay to love, 
whom you can have in your community or whom you cannot? Who is better or worse than anyone else? Who is right about religion or politics or anything else? Jesus' teaching was about living life to its fullest and being true to your own Christ spirit, the spirit of God that came here to express as you. He was crucified largely for his teachings that God was not only in the temple. He took God out of the temple and gave it back to the people. He said, the kingdom is at hand. It's within. It's all around you. And of course, that annoyed the temple elders. They wanted people to come and give their tithes and stuff to the temple. So what is the point of it then? What was the point of the crucifixion and the resurrection for us today? The point was to prove that life is so abundant that when we are truly in that place of understanding, truly in alignment with spirit, nothing can kill us. Nothing can kill our dreams. Nothing can kill our spirit. We are meant to live life abundantly. Yes, the body may die. Moreover, any expression of life is eternal. We may cast off this vehicle that we use to house our soul in this experience, but we live on. We may have dreams and goals and aspirations that we came into life with that have been killed or at least we think they have, and buried in a tomb in our subconscious, they can be brought back to life. We can roll the stones of doubt and fear and programming out of the way and bring them forth. You are meant to shine. You are created to live your truth. Jesus said this. He said, you are the light of the world. Don't hide under a bushel. Shine your light. And even when it says or seems that death has occurred, there is always hope, there is always power, there is always faith in resurrection. This was the great lesson of the resurrection. Life never ends. In the midst of our trials and tribulations, we have this glorious holiday that is the celebration of overcoming. Jesus on Easter morning clearly demonstrated that anything, anything can be overcome, even the destruction of the body temple. Through all of his trials, he was sure of one thing, and that's all it takes, is being sure of one thing, that God loves you. Jesus wanted to, us to always remember that the same God that loved him loved all of us and loves all of us. Every challenge, every obstacle, every problem, every hurdle, everything that we deal with on a daily basis can be overcome when we remember that we are loved, that we are loved by God. On Easter morning, we realize we can overcome because God is here loving us in the midst of whatever experiences we may be having. But sometimes, in the busyness of living, in the activity of life, maybe even by tomorrow morning, we'll forget. We'll feel disconnected again. It's easy to feel the presence of God in church, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't sound too sure of that. Maybe it's because you already know that you can feel the presence of God everywhere, even in the midst of the darkest times. Why do we feel that separation? Why do we feel that darkness? It is because we forget there's a power greater than us that is always at work, that leads us through every situation. And Jesus says, look, this too can be overcome, even death can be overcome. Jesus came into the world to show us over and over again all the limitations that we think are so overwhelming aren't. They're not. He, grew up, he was born under a very difficult circumstances. Normally in the, his world, Mary would never have gotten to give birth to Jesus 
or been accepted. He was born into a conquered land, into a peasant class. He rose up through all the trials and tribulations of his childhood, living in a land like that, to become the greatest, one of the greatest teachers the world has ever known. And then to show us that even death could not stop him. So how overwhelming are the things we experience? He, Jesus said, we can overcome. We can rise up. Think about it. He walked on water. He healed the sick. He fed the multitude. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And throughout all of those three years of ministry, he kept saying, check this out. It works. Now, I've looked. He didn't actually say, check this out. <laughs> but if you bring it into modern language, that's what he would have said. Check it out. This works. All that I do, you can do, and even more when you believe what I have said from the original translations. The truth is, we are here really for one purpose. One purpose. And that is to express God. Express God as us. We are that spark of God living life as us, as you, as me. We all came here with something to do, something to learn, something to become. And each one of us is a living expression of God. And God expresses his infinite diversity. So Easter gives us the opportunity then to remember this, to remember this day, that we can begin a new life, our true life. The great mythologist Joseph Campbell wrote, Easter and Passover offer the perfect symbols, for they mean that we are called to new life. And this new life is not well defined, which is why we want to hold on to the past. The journey to the new life, a journey we all must make, cannot be made unless we let go of the past. So Easter is an invitation. It's an invitation for us to ask this question. What area of my life do I need to let go of? What area of my life needs to be crossed out? And what area of my life needs to be resurrected? What is it that God put in me to be that I have buried in a tomb? What is it that is ready to be brought forth into the light of my Easter morning. Easter for me is about the miracle of new life which can happen to any of us if we have the faith to believe it is possible. You know, Jesus could have avoided the whole crucifixion thing. It really would have been pretty easy for him to do. But he knew that as painful and difficult as that would be, there was greater good on the other side. That's faith. That's faith. And fortunately for most of us, the changes we are faced with are not that severe. I hope. It's all about faith. Faith that we somehow find in our way to a new life that we cannot see or imagine. And the faith part says that I can't see it, I can't imagine it, but it's there. And God will get me to that point. So we gather here on Easter Sunday to remember, to celebrate, and to give thanks for the gift of resurrection. And as good, good as it is to remember and celebrate and give thanks, we have to do more. If we're going to really truly realize the real gift of resurrection for us and for all humankind, we must bring the resurrection to life today. Not just celebrate one person's resurrection 2,000 years ago, but to use the example he set for us, the demonstration he gave us to resurrect life today. Jesus didn't want us to just celebrate the miracle of his resurrection. He wanted us to learn from it so that we can too can experience it. We can all live life more joyously more freely. We can uplift ourselves from any situation, but it requires 
we make a choice. And the choice really boils down to a question. And this is the question I am going to ask all of you to answer for yourselves. And it's an important question. And for some, it may mean a shift of consciousness. It did for me the first time I ever asked it of myself. Am I a crucifixion person or am I a resurrection person? Am I a crucifixion person or am I a resurrection person? The author Kaylin Williams wrote this. Are you a crucifixion person or a resurrection person? Do you believe you were born to suffer and die with an ultimate reward coming at some other place and some other time? Or are you a resurrection person, immersed in leaving behind suffering and building a new life, immersed in being born and enjoying life here and now, immersed in being a part of raising the consciousness of the world itself. To be a resurrection person is to embrace the idea that God is alive and living in everyone, no exceptions. Reborn in every moment, we can reconnect with God. Being a resurrection person means that we face God every day, not a God that is judgmental and angry, prone to human emotions, but a God who works through us, calling us, re reminding us of our divine calling, teaching us what we need to be to be new. To be a resurrection person means that we celebrate the unique beauty in every individual, just as they are, for it is impossible to embrace our own resurrection if we cannot embrace it in others. Resurrection requires a commitment for us to make the world a better place, more heaven-like. Rather than believing that this place is to be a spot where people are tested and suffer and die for the glory of a distant God, resurrection requires we romance possibility. The only way to be a resurrection person is to embrace the possibility that we are all created in God's image and likeness, that we are all divine, that we all have a gift to bring to this world. And the only way to let that happen is to be willing to let go of the parts of us that, aren't, that block that, that do not serve that, and allow that to die so that our real self may be reborn. So I ask you again, are you a crucifixion person? or a resurrection person? Which would you like? To be born in anew in every moment or pinned to a cross for the rest of your mortal life? Are you willing to pay the price for whichever choice you make? The question then becomes, how do I become a resurrection person? How do I experience the great miracle of resurrection? Here's one key. Remember, remember that you are responsible for your life. No one can live your life for you. No one can laugh for you. No one can love for you. No one can forgive for you. No one can live your life except you. And no one can take away your joy or give you joy except yourself. God does not withhold any good thing from anyone but will give according to your ability to receive. The truth is we are all responsible for fulfilling God's work. We are responsible for creating our lives and our relationships with others. It is our responsibility to choose to rise up from our, the pain and struggle we may have been experiencing to greater possibility, to be open to greater good, to unexpected opportunities, to romance the possibility that we are God expressing. It is our responsibility to follow our heart, follow our divine calling. And that calling may be starting a new job, going back to school, continuing in your present life work with a different consciousness, a different attitude. 
But whatever it may be, it's approaching life with new eyes, seeing your life as a ministry to yourself and to the world. It is the giving of the gift of your true self to the world. It's a new outlook on life, a new way of experiencing the world, a new trust that no matter what, the sun will rise again. And that can be S-U-N or S-O-N. The sun will rise again. And when we learn to trust that in ourselves and within everyone we meet, then we discover that divine spark, that potential of God expressing. We have the ability, in spite of the hatred of the world, to rise to love. We have the ability, in spite of the violence around the globe, to rise to peace. We have the ability, in spite of intolerance by so many, to rise to embrace diversity. We have the ability, in spite of warfare and devastation, to rise to hope. We have the ability, instead of poverty and lack, to rise to life abundant. So my prayer for you today as we begin a new year with the Easter experience, is that you find personal inspiration in the resurrection of the Christ. That you remember that the Christ life lives in you and as you. That you remember your relationship with God is powerful, perfect, and ever-present. And greater than whatever may happen to you in your life. For we are people of the resurrection, and we rise. Happy Easter. I am so blessed to be able to play with these guys. Um, this is a tune, oh gee, called Rise. What? Wait, what? we already did a song called Rise. We did. It's, Easter's a very easy um, Sunday to pick songs. Um, this is by the Robbie Saya Band, and we're going to kind of feature Brian here.
choose to give all you are, to give love away, away. Rise, rise, people of love, rise, people of love, rise. Give yourself away, give your love, rise, rise, people of love, rise. If you choose to love, to know that the call is to give